In this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create an arrangement of 3D particles to form a logo using any shape you like. Actually, they are fake 3D particles because they consist of little flat tiles. With a trick, we're gonna make them always look at the camera to keep the 3D illusion. It's inspired by the intro animation of Apple's Far Out event, but we're not gonna recreate it particle by particle. Instead, I'm gonna show you a technique to art direct any formation of 3D particles using footage and textures as layer maps. It works similar to trap code form, but we're gonna use native effects, no plugins. So let's jump right into After Effects. Create a composition with 3840 by 2160 pixels and name it main. We need this higher resolution for a finer grid of particles. For this reason, create a white solid with an even higher size, which is 4400 by 2200 pixels. These numbers make it easier to create an even grid. To create a particle grid, apply a CC ball action effect to it, with the grid spacing set to 10 and ball size set to 49. A much higher size would make the ball exceed the boundaries. With this ball size slightly smaller than the boundaries, we stay in a safe place. Let's give them some random colors by adding a turbulent noise effect before CC ball action and a CC toner effect in between. Increase the contrast and turbulent noise and set different colors in shadows, midtones, and highlights. These are just preliminary colors that will help us grasp the 3D space. Then apply a car dance effect. If you see this yellow warning sign, it'll tell you that it only supports 8-bit, so you should set the composition's depth to 8-bit to make it work properly, and the yellow warning sign disappears. Set rows to 100 and columns to 200. You can't see it yet, but the card dance effect slices the grid around each little sphere into perfect squares. This is based on my halftone technique. Check out my tutorial if you want to know what's going on in detail. Next, import your logo, drag it into the timeline and scale it to your liking. I recommend using simple, less detailed logos, like the Apple logo, which in my opinion is a genius piece of design. Anyways, we're gonna need the logo to drive the scale of the little spheres. Okay, let's try it out. Put the logo below the solid layer and turn it off. In the card dance effect, change gradient layer 1 to the logo layer. In X and Y scale, set source to intensity 1, which refers to gradient layer 1. Well, basically it worked, but the logo is stretched to fit the solid. To fix this, pre-compose the logo, check move all attributes into the new composition and name it logo map. Looks better, but because it looks a bit squeezed, adjust the pre-comp size to the solid's measurements to get the correct scale. To better see what's going on, lock the main composition, open the logo map composition, lock it as well and snap the composition window into the edge to have the result and the logo map side by side. What we need are spheres that don't fill the shape but the outline. To do this, right click on the logo layer and select create shapes from vector layer if you haven't shape layers already. Duplicate the shape layer, turn off the shape layer below, add a stroke operator and delete the fill operators. Now increase the stroke until you get a fully outlined shape of particles. You can see that the spheres overlap with each other. Because white scales them up to the maximum, darker shades scale them down, and black let the spheres totally disappear. To keep the particle size, the shade has to be mid-gray, which is 80-80-80 in hexadecimals. Let's create some particles around this outline. Turn on the shape layer below, apply a fast box blur effect to it, increase the blur radius, and apply a set matte effect with invert matte checked, which cuts the original shape out of the blur. Then apply a turbulent noise effect and increase the contrast for some nice size variations. If you want, you can apply a curves effect and edit the alpha curve to adjust the sizes of the surrounding particles. To have some variations in the outline as well, copy the turbulent noise effect, paste it into the layer above and decrease the contrast a bit to avoid overlapping particles. Back in the main composition, go to the card dance effect, 
open camera position and play around with the Y rotation. And unfortunately, the particles look like flat planes, which they actually are. To retain the illusion of 3D spheres when you move the camera, open the card dance effect and Y rotation, grab the offset pick whip and drag it to the camera's position's Y rotation, which makes it look even worse. To fix this, open the expression editor and add minus before the expression. This counteracts the rotation of the camera so that the spheres, which are actually planes, always look at the camera, making them look 3D. Unfortunately, it works just for one axis. If you use more axes simultaneously, that won't work. At some point of the camera rotation, the spheres get darker. To make them keep brighter in every camera perspective, go to the lighting settings to increase the ambient light. Now let's animate the camera. In my case, I'm gonna set the camera's Y rotation to negative 30. Set a keyframe at frame 0, go to frame 75, set Y rotation to 0, select the new keyframe, go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant and select Easy Ease. As it looks quite isometric, set the focal length to 35mm. Next go to frame 40, set camera's Z position to 1 to get closer to the logo again and set a keyframe here. With this keyframe selected, go to the keyframe assistant again to make it easy ease. If you want, you can also adjust the outgoing keyframe velocity. In my case, I set the influence to 88 to make the animation start smoothly. Then go to frame 150 and decrease the Z position until we fly through the logo. A simple camera animation. Okay. Now let's get the particles into Z-Space. Duplicate the logo map composition, rename it to Depth Map, drag it into the main composition and toggle it off. Go to the Card Dance effect, set Gradient Layer 2 to the Depth Map layer, open Z-Position and change Source to Intensity 2, getting the luminance of Gradient Layer 2. You can see that if I increase the Z-Position's multiplier to 30, the particles move erratically into negative and positive Z-space. But the good thing is, we can tweak the depth to control the positions of the particles and get our original shape back. Open the depth map, lock the composition window and drag it to the right. Create a black solid below the shape layers and apply a turbulent noise effect to it. In the lower shape layer, turn off every effect, except of the fast box blur effect. Set the fill color to mid-gray, then add an offset operator to it, increase the amount and lower the blur radius. This way, we increase the mid-gray area around the logo, making the particles within almost unaffected. Which means that the smaller particles around the outline keep their positions. In the top shape layer, decrease the opacity of turbulent noise to 2% to make the original shape distinctive again. Looks good, but the bottom area looks a bit deformed. To fix this, you can play around with the evolution in the turbulent noise effect on the black solid. A brute force method would be to increase the stroke width and turn off the turbulent noise effect. But let's undo this, because I like the little irregularities. To have less particles behind the logo, you can apply a curves effect to the solid layer and lighten up the darker areas. Darker tones below mid-gray move the particles into negative Z-space. Lighter shades above mid-gray into the positive Z-space. Looks really good so far, but it still looks like an even matrix here. To disperse the particles a bit, set X position multiplier to 0, 0,02 and Y position multiplier to 0, 0,02 as well. Then set both source dropdowns to intensity 1. To make the logo shape more distinctive, reduce the ball size to 30 in the logo layer, duplicate the solid, change ball size to 20 in this layer, Reduce the Z position and increase X and Y position multipliers to 0, 0,05. To fine tune the colors, change turbulent noise to dynamic, which to me creates a more interesting color distribution. Change tones to pentone and CC toner and adjust highlights, brights, midtone, dark tones, and shadows. 
Copy Turbulent Noise and CC Toner, select the layer above, select Turbulent Noise and CC Toner, and paste the adjusted effect over them. OK, let's create the stars around the logo. Duplicate the solid in the main comp, duplicate the depth map comp and rename it to star map. Drag it below the other layers and turn it off. Open it, drag the composition window to the right and go back to the main comp. In the top main comp layer, change gradient layer 1 to the star map layer. Then reduce the ball size in CC ball action and increase Z position multiplier to 40. In the star map layer, change the fill color of the bottom shape layer to black, which makes the center particles disappear. To thin the particles out, increase the turbulent noise contrast in the solid layer and decrease the brightness. And finally, create an adjustment layer in the main comp, apply a glow effect to it, and that's it guys! So this was the basic technique, but I encourage you to play around with the parameters like I did here. Fiddle around with the colors, try different turbulent noise fractal types, and tweak the values of the car dance effect until you get what you want. See you next time.